Hello, so the previous video discussed the preferred method of getting the uh, seat plumb and edge bevels in a roof by calculating the degrees and then marking them with a roofing protractor. Uh, that is the preferred method mainly because every time you mark a rafter out you can simply read the information off your calculation sheet and mark it straight on. This video is going to look at what to do if you don't actually have a roofing protractor with you. So there could be any number of reasons for that. Maybe you're too cheap to buy one or perhaps it's been lost. But no matter the reason, we're going to have a look at just another option for setting out those bevel angles so that you can get them marked on when all you have is a bevel and not an actual proper roofing protractor. So this is a drawing of the advanced roof practical that we run here at Acacia Ridge. First thing you're going to need is something to draw your triangles on and I always like to use just a piece of plywood with a right angle corner on it. So we've just got a, uh, a rectangle there which represents a, uh, a piece of ply. Make sure they've got nice straight sides on it and a right angle corner. And all we're going to do is basically redraw the triangle that you're trying to get the bevels for. Off your sheet you've already got a, uh, a rise and a run for this triangle. This is just a common rafter triangle so we're going to be getting the, the seat bevel and the plumb bevel for that rafter. So all we have to do is from this corner we're just going to measure along the bottom the distance of our run across there. So that's that measurement across there. We're going to gum up here the rise. So let's say for example we have a roof here with a uh, let's say a four metre run and a three metre rise. If we redraw that triangle, four metres long, three metres high, join those two and here we have the seat bevel. You can put your bevel against the plywood and set it to that angle for your seat bevel and the same up here for the plumb bevel. That's your plumb bevel. Now it's wildly inconvenient to be expected to draw a triangle that is five metres long or four metres high or something like that. So what we can do is scale that triangle down so that it fits on a smaller piece of plywood. So if we divide this measurement down or scale it down, we can use any, any kind of method you like. If that's four metres across there, you could divide it down by 10 and draw a triangle that's 400 long. Or you could even divide it down more and have a, a 200 long trial, uh, a 200 long run and the same proportion up the side. So in this example, maybe we've got a chunk of plywood. We'll divide it down by 10 or any figure you want. So long as you divide the run and the rise down by the same amount, and then you draw that line in there, you'll notice our scaled down line is parallel to this line. And that means our angles in here are exactly the same. So this is just a scaled down version of that full roofing triangle. So let's get rid of that line and there's our plumb and our seat bevel for the common rafter. The next rafter we're going to have a look at is this hip rafter. You'll remember from the previous videos the seat bevel and the plumb bevel are different from the seat and the plumb of the common rafter that's next to it. I'm just going to slide that rafter down to there. There's the common rafter that sits next to it. We do the same thing again. We mark this run, which is a little longer than the run of uh, the common rafter. Make sure you scale this down the same way you scale down the common rafter triangle. You'll notice the rise of this hip rafter is the same as the rise of that one. So we can go back to this mark here as well. Draw that in and there we have the hip seat cut and the hip plumb cut ready to put your bevel against the edge of your plywood and set it to that angle there when you need your hip plumb cut. And we can do the same method for the edge angle. So here I've got three of our edge angles marked. There's our common rafter, the distance across the top plate and our hip rafter. And we can do exactly the same thing. We've got a right angle corner there, a right angle corner in that corner there. And we just scale those measurements down the same way we did on these ones and mark them on there. So this first mark I've made on there is actually the run 
of that common rafter and this is because I'm working on this one here. You'll remember from previous videos that the distance across the bottom of that top plate or along that top plate equals the run of that rafter under there. So this distance from there to there I've marked on the bottom here. That's our right angle in this corner and I'll mark the geometric length of that rafter up there along that edge and you'll notice this distance from there to there that's the geometric length of that common rafter so that's the distance I've marked up there it's just the GL scaled down the same rate that I've scaled everything else down so I connect those lines up and there's my edge angle for that hip if we come over and have a look at this hip we can do the same thing again there's a geometric length of the common rafter because it comes up to the same ridge it's the same height as that or the same rise so that's that mark there this distance across the plate here we mark along there and we join them up and there is the edge angle for this hip rafter in this corner and we can do the same for that one now you'll notice we're starting to get a lot of lines in one area and it's starting to get a little bit congested with numerous lines simple solution that is we can just easily mark it on another corner as long as we keep the same measurements scaled down by the same rate those angles will be accurate for these corners so the next one I'm going to look at are these crown end rafters you'll remember from previous videos these are a little bit different they don't form the full triangle that we can redraw on here and that's best seen in this view here there is the shape of the crown end on the splayed end there is the edge angle that we want but you'll remember the top plate in there it goes around the corner like that with the hip rafter there so there's no triangle there that we can recreate however you'll also remember that this hip angle here is half the angle of the crown end that we need so all we need to do again is double that angle to get the full edge bevel we require for that crown end so here's the uh, crown end that uh, we need to get the edge bevel for there's one of those hip rafters there's the other crown end on the other side so that angle in there is the edge bevel that we've already calculated here and we need to get double that around here so just to make it easy I'll remove that line so we don't have too many lines getting in the way and confusing the issue all we need to do is mark a line at right angles to our hip rafter and that's just like drawing a line straight across that hip rafter at right angles to it whatever measurement you have from that point to that point you simply repeat that measurement on the other side make it the same and then draw a line right through there we have now just doubled that angle and there is the edge angle for this crown in rafter and then you can do the same method to get any other crown in rafter that is in that same situation so there's that edge angle through there and there's that line that I removed previously which was the edge angle for this hip now you'll notice we've got numerous lines on the same piece of timber and I haven't even marked in all of the edge angles that are required on this roof I've just picked out a few of them so you're going to end up with a piece of timber with a mass of lines there guaranteed to get very confusing when you're out on site and trying to figure out which angle goes with which part of the roof so I highly recommend you get if you're going to use this method get yourself several pieces of plywood and very clearly mark on each one what it is you're marking on there you might even write along the line exactly what rafter and what angle is each of those lines having said that the preferred method uh, was discussed in the previous video calculated out using uh, the trigonometry on the calculator write the measurements on the calculation sheet that you will have to uh, to do your practical and that way every time you pick a rafter you just read all the information you need straight off that line 
this is just an option in case you're ever in a situation where you don't have a roofing protractor to copy those degrees from.